Welcome back to Transcriber from Reddit. Today's topic comes from the subreddit Politics, posted by user iBarryBryant. This is a linked post with the title, The Christian Nationalism of Speaker Mike Johnson. The link goes to a time.com article. I'm transcribing this today along with offering some unfiltered reaction to it because a lot of the people I know, including myself, grew up being surrounded by Christian nationalism or soft Christian nationalism ideas. Here, the time.com article titled Christian Nationalism, excuse me, The Christian Nationalism of Speaker Mike Johnson. This is under the categories Ideas and Politics. It was written by Andrew Whitehead and Samuel Perry on October 27th, 2023. This is even more concerning now with the upcoming 2024 election. Here are their bios. Whitehead, parentheses, at Andrew Whitehead, in parentheses, is an associate professor of sociology at IUPUI and author of the forthcoming book, American Idolatry, How Christian Nationalism Betrays the Gospel and Threatens the Church, linked here. He is co-author, parentheses, with Samuel Perry, in parentheses, of the award-winning book, Taking America Back for God, Christian Nationalism in the United States, linked here. Perry, parentheses, at Prof. Sam Perry, in parentheses, is a professor of sociology at the University of Oklahoma. He is among the nation's leading experts on conservative Christianity in American politics, race, sexuality, and families. His most recent books include the award-winning Taking America Back for God, linked here, parentheses, with Andrew Whitehead, and and parentheses, excuse me, and The Flag and the Cross, linked here, parentheses, with Philip Gorski, and parentheses. I begin reading the article. In his first day as the new Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, parentheses, Republican, L.A., and parentheses, wasted no time in using sweeping religious rhetoric to magnify this political moment. While addressing his colleagues, he shared how, quote, I don't believe there are any coincidences. I believe that scripture, the Bible, is very clear that God is the one that raises up those in authority. He raised up each one of you, all of us. And I believe that God has ordained and allowed us to be brought here to the specific moment and time. End quote. Linked here. While what Speaker Johnson believes God ordained him to do will become clear in the coming weeks and months, his prior work, words, and writing give several clues. Although he has never called himself a Christian nationalist nor publicly embraced the term as other House reps have done, linked here, each example points to the strong embrace of the ethos of Christian nationalism, a cultural framework that advocates for a particular expression of Christianity to be fused with American civic life with the government vigorously promoting and preserving this version of Christianity as the principal and undisputed cultural framework. Speaker Johnson has explicitly embraced the idea that the U.S. was founded upon particular Christian principles in 2016, claiming, quote, you know, we don't live in a democracy, dot, dot, dot. It's a constitutional republic. And the founders set that up because they followed the biblical admonition on what a civil society is supposed to look like, end quote. Linked here. Side note, what Speaker Johnson is talking about has two particular notes to it that I want to expand on. Yes, technically America does not and is not and hasn't been a democracy. It's been a republic. However, there's been different ideas of what kind of republic we are. 
such as constitutional republic versus representative republic versus a federal and representative republic. In this case, what sets Christian nationalism apart is the fact that it looks at the Constitution and the way that America is set up and looks at that republic notion and joins the two together because they claim that the Constitution has a biblical basis underneath it. And that's why America needs to go back to being under Christian influence, especially political influence. Also, I want to point out that when he uses the words biblical admonition on what a civil society is supposed to look like, that was usually proposed to Christian, to Christ, excuse me, to Christian nationalists as a fusion of Roman values as well as Old Testament and New Testament principles. The Bible never explicitly states what a civil society should look like. There are rules specific for Israel, and then there are rules specific for Christians. While there are ideas that transcend both the Old and New Testaments, there are also plenty of ideas that don't translate over from Old to New Testament. And there's considerable debate among scholars as to what actually constitutes an actual biblical society, let alone a civil society. And also, the more honest biblical scholars will admit that that biblical society, in order to have a civil component, needs to have an allowance for people who don't follow the Bible, lest what happened in the Spanish Inquisition happens again. I continue reading. In the same interview, he reiterated his belief that the separation of church and state is not a constitutional principle. Quote, over the last 60 or 70 years, our generation has been convinced that there is a separation of church and state, dot, dot, dot. Most people think that is part of the Constitution, but it's not, end quote linked here. And in 2022, he stated, quote, the founders wanted to protect the church from an encroaching state, not the other way around, end quote, linked here. Johnson and those he has famously represented insist the United States is a nation with, quote, Judeo-Christian roots, end quote, linked here, at which, quote, secular forces are chipping away, end quote. Side note, that also includes other institutions such as Breakpoint slash the Col Col excuse me slash the Colson Center. That also includes IBLP. That also includes focus on the family, as well as the Heritage Foundation. I continue reading. Having studied Christian nationalism for over a decade, we find it is consistently made up of several different elements. When we say Speaker Johnson is a Christian nationalist, we mean he provides a near-perfect example for each element. Section, Traditionalist Social Arrangements. First, Christian nationalism strongly favors traditionalist social relationships and hierarchies. This ideal society revolves around patriarchy, heterosexual marriage, and pronatalism. Consequently, certain citizens and family arrangements should have easy access to various civil rights and liberties, while others should be denied access. Note that the word should is in italics. As an attorney working for the Alliance Defense Fund, now known as Alliance Defending Fe Freedom, excuse me, linked here, parentheses, founded by leaders with similar Christian nationalist commitments like James Dobson, D. James Kennedy, and Bill Bright, and parentheses. Speaker Johnson opposed the decriminalization of homosexual activity through Lawrence v. Texas in 2003 and in 2004 proposed banning same-sex marriage. He argued how both will, quote, de-emphasize the importance of traditional marriage to society, weaken it, and place our entire democratic, 
excuse me, place our entire democratic system in jeopardy by eroding its foundation, end quote. And that, quote, experts project that homosexual marriage is the dark harbinger of chaos and sexual anarchy that could doom even the strongest republic, end quote. Mike Johnson has sponsored multiple bills aimed at a nationwide ban on abortion, which he once publicly blamed for school shootings, linked here. He also once structured opposition to Roe v. Wade in terms of how it, in his view, limited the number of able-bodied workers in the economy, which fundamentally weakens the government's ability to fund various social programs. Side note, it is ironic that he would structure that opposition in such a way, considering that he comes from a Christian nationalist point of view, which is very much against government-run social programs. I continue reading. Like a car engineered to run on gasoline, Johnson sees our nation, and any nation for that matter, only running properly on the social arrangements elevated in the conservative Anglo-Protestant tradition. Johnson's politics are those that formally privilege gender traditionalism and heterosexuality as the national ideal. Section. Authoritarian social control. Second, Christian nationalism adheres to a desire for strong leaders who, through the threat of violence or actual violence, defend the preferred social arrangements and hierarchies. This includes setting aside the results of free and fair elections, linked here, to ensure a chosen leader remains in power. Americans who embrace Christian nationalism are more likely to support anti-democratic tactics and approve of political violence if an election does not return favorable results, both linked here. Mike Johnson was a central figure in trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election, joining 146 other Republicans in Congress, repeating debunked claims about, quote, rigged, end quote, Dominion voting machines, linked here. Johnson went so far as to author an amicus brief for a case where Texas moved to have swing state results thrown out. His consistent efforts to deny and overturn the 2020 election earned him the nickname, quote, MAGA Mike, end quote, from fellow lawmakers. Side note, when it comes to the 2020 election and claims of rigged voting machines, I think unless both sides can agree it to a third party monitoring and making sure that the voter rolls are cleaned from the machine each time, allowing the voter rolls to be renewed for each election, keeping voter identity private, making sure that nothing can be leaked, making sure that the machines get wiped and are tested and are ready for every election. Only then will the voting, any potential errors in the voting system get relatively neutralized. There are some errors in the voting system and there needs to be a way to make sure that there isn't one party or the other that's completely behind getting the voting system fixed because if that party gets their hands on the voting system, it's very easy and very tempting and they'll probably likely i'm not saying they will but likely try and take it over until we can get both parties and for there to be security on these machines and an actual process for making that happen that is supported on both sides of the aisle i don't see that that's going to happen but that's my less than humble opinion. I continue reading. Speaker Johnson exemplifies this aspect of Christian nationalism, disregarding the values of democracy to instead embrace any means through which political power remains in the, quote, right, end quote, hands. And this comfort with setting aside democratic ideals aligns with another element of Christian nationalism. Side note, it is absolutely shocking to me how 
even if you want to claim that the voting system is rigged, how the Republicans have absolutely backed Donald Trump the entire time. Instead of having him go the more palatable route of ceding to Joe Biden and building up his campaign and making himself see him more credible and fair and honorable. They are encouraging Donald Trump's statements of, excuse me, statements and claims of the 2020 election being rigged. And if the recent court cases in Georgia are anything to go by, they're also encouraging political violence and that is never okay regardless of what party you're on. I continue reading. Section, ethno-racial boundaries. Third, Christian nationalism is characterized by strong ethno-racial boundaries around national identity, civic participation, and social belonging, all linked here. In fact, scholars often call the ideology white Christian nationalism for this very reason, linked here. The ideal American is generally understood to be a natural-born Anglo-Protestant. It is this group who created the U.S., and it is this group who should remain central to its cultural identity and political leadership. Speaker Johnson has supported legislation that would soothe the conscience and protect the authority of such Americans, such as laws that limit teaching on race-related topics within public schools, linked here, like Florida's, quote, don't say gay, end quote, law. Johnson has also advanced legislation that would increase the burden on undocumented immigrants seeking asylum, linked here. Within the Christian nationalist system, excuse me, within the Christian nationalist vision, our research shows ethnic diversity is not our national strength, but a hindrance. And so there must be barriers around who gets to enjoy those benefits and participate in the civil sphere. Americans who embrace Christian nationalism can simultaneously claim Christian ideals of caring for those less fortunate while objecting to the nation serving various populations in need of refuge. Side note, it absolutely amazed me and likewise confounded me growing up in that space, how much Christ calls for serving the poor and the needy and the most underserved among us would be proclaimed while simultaneously working towards lessening those opportunities for said groups. The mental gymnastics is absolutely insane and it is really sad to see. wanting to serve children in the local community while acting enraged against the single mothers that want their kids to go to said school. Wanting more enrollment, wanting more people to attend their churches so then they open up their churches for those activities and then being outraged that certain groups of people are looking to use them. Perhaps the most hypocritical thing to me is that the pastors and the teachers that are working at said religious schools and churches are often on various government forms of not just health care, but also food stamps and the like. And they still encourage people to be against those various programs for social welfare and benefit. That's not what should happen. Those programs are there and they should remain there, not just for some people, but for everybody who falls in those in the categories that need that kind of help. And that shouldn't be stigmatized. Everybody has bad days and everybody needs help. Section. Populism and conspiratorial thinking. 
A final element of Christian nationalism is a populist impulse that creates space for Americans to embrace feelings of victimization that certain, quote, elites, end quote, are trying to persecute them, which lends itself to adopting more conspiratorial thinking that includes belief in anti-vaccine myths, QAnon, and anti-Semitic tropes. All linked here. In addition to repeatedly elevating Trump's conspiracy theories about the 2020 election, Johnson has also often repeated the, quote, great replacement theory, end quote, that Democrats are bringing immigrants to replace natural born citizens and secure Democratic votes. This is the core of right wing populist thinking, defending, quote, real Americans, end quote, from elites and outsiders corrupting our culture and politics. It is also the core of Christian nationalism. It is critical to recognize the influence of Christian nationalism on Mike Johnson's vision for the U.S. Quote, Christian nationalism, end quote, isn't a political slur. It's a term that accurately describes an ideology that is antithetical to a stable, multiracial, and liberal democracy. An ideology clearly guiding the now-ranking Republican in the U.S. House of Representatives. Here ends the article. Below it, there are more must-reads from Time, as well as a contact us at lettersattime.com. Before ending, I want to offer up some more points. Think about what this means if Trump does get elected. I don't see him immediately enacting everything. However, the fact that Project 2025, that is linked to some of his current closest advisors, wants to be able to hand the president office even more power and authority than it already has, concerns me. It also concerns me that in this presidential cycle, there are so many on the GOP and Republican side that are more than willing to just throw away the niceties. Just even having people on stage who are a reasonable vice president pick and other potential cabinet picks by Trump that are able to be reasonable and beckon to those who are in the center and aren't sure which or who to vote for, depending on where their priorities and beliefs lie this upcoming November. persuasive and in the presidential excuse me in the vice presidential debate jd vance was especially able to pull all of that out and look a lot better on the stage than he had been in past interviews but to not even act relatively reasonable when it comes to discussing the events surrounding 2020 and being able to at least contain their dislike for the person who was voted in in 2020 and that you have so many people who are in Trump's circle who have Trump's ear who have released projects like Project 2025 that unleash their visions for the future. The fact that there are so many of them that are out and about and are practically just frothing at the mouth, ready to implement their actions, their ideas, and their, frankly, un-American projects. All because they're getting ready 
to have someone be elected who would immediately expand the office and the power of the president, which is not something that should happen. Definitely not without at least the power of Congress being widened and the ability to veto the president. Or at the bare minimum, be able to do more things to control the president's power. For disliking big government, they sure want to give their president an awful lot of power. If you're like me, it probably took you a long time to see it. And as much regret as you may feel like I do for not having seen it earlier, at least we see it now. It doesn't mean we pick one side or the other, but we look at ourselves and our nation and we have the ability to look beyond just us and just our immediate circles of influence and our friends and those whom we agree with and be able to see the other side and other people and ask ourselves who would be better as a whole for the country. And I can honestly tell you that even with the amount of Christians in the country, there are probably also Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists and other non-religious identifying Americans. And their opinions and their lives equally matter as much as the Christians. Thank you for listening and watching another video. I will see you in the next one.